Today, we take a look at American Pie, a musical tour through American history. The Bartholomew County Public Library Seed Share Program and how it aims to support gardening in our community. And the effect the war in Ukraine has on a Ukrainian exchange student at Hauser. All that and more on Torch TV. Hello and welcome back to the Columbus East Media Studio in this edition of Sports TV. I'm your host, Gavin Grimes, and alongside me is Kate Roeder. How are you today, Kate? I'm feeling pretty good and I'm super excited to jump right into our last show of the year. I can't believe it's the end of the year already. Let's start our last show with some announcements. BCSE has changed its summer laptop policy for this school year. Laptops are no longer required to be checked into the tech office before the end of the school year. You may take your laptop home over the summer and return with it fully charged on the first day of school. If you do not wish to take your laptop home, you can check it into the tech office from now until this Friday, May 20th. Some people might say the American Pie concert is just a collection of music, but for those who produce the show, they would say differently. American Pie is an annual tour through pop culture and music across all sorts of time periods. In 2022, American Pie highlighted the best of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. The bands on stage consisted not only of guitars and drums, but they included brass and woodwind instruments as well. Each song was performed by different groups. Some performers brought guitars to shred a solo and take the spotlight as well. Some groups went the extra mile to dress as if they were the original band themselves, just to get a little closer to the feel of the music. Approximately 20 songs were performed throughout the show. American Pie 2022 was definitely successful in showing the great music and culture of the last 60 years. Students, please clean out your lockers and turn in books to the bookstore and library books to the library. Please take personal items home as all lockers will be cleaned out. Once you have them cleaned out, please do not shut the door, but leave the door slightly open. The Bartholomew County Library offers more than just books and movies. They also provide seeds for a garden. Our very own sophomore, Madison Valentine, joins us with more. In early 2020, the Bartholomew County Public Library launched Clio Seed Share, a program created to encourage gardening and self-sustainability within Columbus. From basil and oregano to cabbage and sunflowers, the Bartholomew County Public Library's Clio Seed Share program aims to offer gardening opportunities to the city of Columbus, all, like most anything at the library, for anyone and at no cost. People donate seeds to the library and there's a form you can fill out to tell us a little bit about the seeds you're donating and then what I do is I take those seeds and I make them into smaller packets then people come and check them out for free and the idea is that once you grow those seeds you would harvest some of those seeds and donate them back to the library so that we can keep the seed share going. There are some things that get donated a lot more frequently than others but we also purchase seeds about once every other year to fill in some gaps. The share carries a large number of seeds varying from edible varieties such as herbs and fruits to ornamental plants and flowers. Many of these plants also provide food for pollinators and are encouraged to be planted by the Shares librarians. Invasive species are not offered in order to support the growth of local ecosystems. Not this past year's Exhibit Columbus, but the one before that, there was the native garden out on the library plaza. And when all those plants were about to be moved to wherever they went, we had a seed gathering event where people could come and um, harvest seeds from those plants. And a lot of those seeds ended up in the seed library. And then we also had a seed swap at that event. So people donated seeds and and that's where the first seeds came from. Despite a rocky year following its opening in March 2020, the share has quickly recovered during the past and current two growing seasons. The library has gone from having the seed share unavailable during the height of the pandemic to currently having a sign-out sheet fully filled with names every day. I mean, we want to help people with their endeavors, their lifelong learning, and if that pursuit is growing their own food at home, then we can help with that too. 
Madison, if people want to use a seed share, what do they need to do? They just need to visit the public library and check out seeds directly from the share. The share is located in the front right of the library near the CDs and DVDs. Thanks, Madison. The seed share sounds like a really beneficial resource to the local community. Coming up after the break, we take a look at the Astronomy Classes Rocket Project and some more announcements. Teens tend to develop a sense for who they should be through social media. Teens rely on it to make decisions about music, fashion, and they feel pressured to fit in. When teens receive negative feedback or sarcastic comments, it can really cause a negative impact. Don't let social media define who you should be. Graduation is Saturday, May 28th at 1 o'clock. The event will be live streamed and you can find the link on the BCSE YouTube page. The Bartholomew County 4-H Fair will be back in town from June 24th to July 2nd. A new, a new queen will be crowned to reign over the 2022 Bartholomew County Fair on Saturday, June 18th. If you love the fair, appreciate the hard work of our local 4-H'er and would like a chance to win some prizes and scholarship money, please consider running for the title of 2022 Miss Bartholomew County 4-H Fair. Applications are due May 27th and can be accessed on the Bartholomew County Fair website. Last month, the East Astronomy class started their rocket project, where students designed, built, and tested their own rockets. Oh, yeah. Each rocket had a capsule made of an egg attached to a parachute. The goal of the project was to launch a rocket the highest and to make sure the egg came down safely. <laughs> Sensors were placed on the rocket to calculate max velocity and altitude. With that data, students were able to make calculations such as how many rockets they would need to reach space or what their er orbit around the Earth would look like. Overall, the project was a success, with many students learning valuable engineering and design skills. Um, I also think a lot of students uh, haven't had the opportunity to really like, do some sort of design and construction. Um, and the way the project works is they get their hands wet with some sort of some CAD design, actually designing the fins and the shape of the rocket and doing some testing in a program on the computers, and then they have to build out the whole thing. They had all kinds of choices, like the number of fins that they put on there. Some students use three, some students use four. Fins add weight, the fins add extra friction with the air, um, but you've got to keep it straight because you lose a lot, of, a lot of energy if your rocket is doing this. As it's going up, it's not going to go quite as high. Yeah, it will. And now here's Andrew Dickmeyer with our local forecast. Both today and tomorrow, temperatures will stick in the 80s with there being a small chance of an isolated thunderstorm in the late afternoon. Saturday might call for a strong, severe thunderstorm to roll by in the, from the northwest in the afternoon hours with mid-70s in our area. This is Andrew Dickmeyer with your local forecast. We'll be back after the break with how the war in Ukraine has affected a foreign exchange unit from the area. All that and more on Torch TV. Sleeping too much is a common symptom of depression, along with a lack of energy, trouble remembering, and reoccurring thoughts of death or suicide. If you think you may be struggling with depression, talk to your doctor 
or call 1-800-662-HELP. If you're missing any items, please check the Lost and Found to see if any items you may have lost are there before the end of the year. Any items left in the Lost and Found will be donated to San Susi if they are not collected. Three months ago, the Russian invasion of Ukraine began. For us in the U.S., this has meant financial instability and higher gas prices. But for a Ukrainian exchange student at Hauser, it has meant much more than a higher price to fill up her tank. In recent months, the Russian military has begun an all-out attack at the Ukrainian eastern border where they have met fierce resistance from people fighting to protect their homeland. This fight has displaced thousands and affects thousands more every day. My family is doing okay. Currently, they're still working and they are still trying to keep up with like life going on because they live in the west of Ukraine and we don't have like actual war going on there. And they're trying to volunteer and help other people. Even though Yulia's family has not yet been displaced, they're still doing everything in their power to help out the war. So currently, my cousin, uh, he got drafted, so he's in east of Ukraine where the war is going on. Other men and boys in my family, they're not able to go to the war right now, but in case if my country will keep drafting people, they might draft them as well. So currently war is still going on. They are still trying to occupy, occupy Ukrainian territories and it's really sad because first few weeks of the war, the whole world was talking about that, so it was at the first page of every newspaper, every uh, radio station, everybody was talking about the Ukraine. Right now less people are talking, are talking, but the thing is it's still going on and people are still, still dying. Kids are still dying and we just need help and support from the whole world because it's a genocide. Yesterday, Yuli announced that she'll be staying at Hauser for her senior year as she cannot return to Ukraine because of the war. If you would like to donate to the Ukrainian relief effort, you can donate by going to the website listed below. And now, our spring sports wrap-up. Last week, Anthony Lloyd long jumped 22 feet, becoming your 22 conference champion. Also, Jacob Goose was at the conference champion in both discuss and shot put. <laughs> On Saturday, senior night, the baseball team unfortunately came up short against Madison, losing 5-0, but they are back in action tonight at 5.30 again against East Central High School. Our softball team is also in action tonight at 5.30 against Indian Creek High School. Lastly, Bob Gaddis, who was inducted as the National High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Congrats to you, Coach. <laughs> That's all we have time for today. From Kate, Madison, Andrew, and the rest of the East Media Crew, I'm Gavin Grimes, and thanks for watching. To end off the show, we are showing a compilation of some of the best camera shots the CEHS Media Crew has shot this year. And as a reminder, always remember to be the best part of someone's day. Yeah.